Hey guys, so this video um, will be about the Hi-Fi-Man uh, Sundara. Um, you know, I usually do IEMs, but I've been, I, you know, I listen to um, headphone sets over the ear cans in my home stereo system. And so I thought I'd start doing some comparisons, um, especially since I've had so much experience now with the IEMs. So let me start off with the, the, the high fi ones. The high fi ones, they come in a cardboard box. This is it. Um, nothing fancy. They just, they sit inside there. They make it, they put the silky stuff to try and make it look really impressive, I guess. Um, comes, with, comes with one cable. This is the cable. It's got a, a quarter inch adapter. That actually doesn't screw on and off. You just pull it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Um, I like the quarter end. Uh, I don't know why, it just feels more beefy, but nothing fancy there. Just a box, the headphones, um, little 3.5 inch adapters that snap into the uh, the cups on either side. Clearly marked with an L and an R. Same thing on the inside of the band. Um, I'm not gonna cover too much on the build. The uh, There's a lot of videos about unboxing these and build and stuff. I will say this, they're very, very comfortable. And in fact, there's two other headphones. Uh, one I reviewed, which is the DT1990. And I got a review coming up for the Focal Clear. And these are way more comfortable than the DT1990. Um, and equally as comfortable, if not slightly more comfortable than the Focal Clear. So um, that's, you know, that's good. Now, a lot of people grab these and they twist and they go, oh, look, if you do this and there's a little jingle over here. I, you know, I, I think that's kind of stupid when I see people doing that in videos. Truthfully, I don't know about you guys, but I take my headphones, I plug them in, I open them, and I put them on my head. I don't sit there fidgeting with them, twisting them all over the place and looking for problems. I mean, it, I, I've got headphones that I've had for 10 years, and probably they would have broken if I was doing that all the time. But because I'm just using them in a regular fashion, just taking them off and putting them on my ears, um, you know, they hold up forever. These are well made. That's the, the metal on this is nice. Um, I would compare these in style and design to the Theo Audio Phantoms. That's where it would stop though. Um, the Theo Audio Phantoms are nowhere near the quality of these in my opinion. Um, have a very positive latch that clicks up and down and, and really stays in place, which I like. The Theo Audio Phantom, when I put them on my head, the cups just droop down right away. So I ended up having to take this section of the Theo Audios apart and make a little insert to put in there. And um, that's how I was able to get it to be more positive. And it worked pretty good. But it was it was quite a bit of work to get that, that part fixed. Also, I had to futz around with the design, I mean, with the internal planar in order to get it to sound a little better. And truthfully, the Theo Audio Phantom and this... There's no comparison. Don't let anyone tell you there is. That Theo Audio is strictly treble in like a can or something. It it sounds okay if you like high end. It does have a lot of detail, but its tonal quality is, is shit. Sorry to tell you. Um, and, and the reason I'm even bringing it up is they're exactly the same price. This is $349, and I'm actually looking at the audio on Linsole, it's $349. So the, the Theo Audio gives you a lot more accessories, gives you a case, gives you multiple cables, attach adapters, that kind of thing. Um, this comes with the cans and the cable, and that's it. That's okay, because these, these sound really fantastic. I would say that I was very surprised. Um, but the, let's go back to the build though. Um, so the metal on here, very sturdy. I don't see it flexing or bending. These are attached very well. Um, no popping in and out, right? They, they're in there good. And I'm talking about the rivets, the hinges from the, uh, the holder here to the cup. Um, I haven't tried taking the ear pads off. Uh, I've seen videos of that. It's not too bad. The video, the, the video, the pads are angled so that they sit at an angle on your head. Um, I'm guessing to help produce stage, more stage. A uh, very nice kind of a, you know, metal screen right here. It's very comfortable. Uh, by comfortable, I mean like with the audios, it kind of cuts your fingers if you rub them here. This one's very soft, no problem. Um, the headband is wide and it, it is very comfortable. 
I could feel it like kind of like pressing on my head a little bit, but it's very comfortable. And these you might be able to wear outside and not feel like a dork. You know what I mean? Because they're not huge or overly aggressive in their styling. Um, really though, I mean, why would you wear these outside? You can just wear IEMs. So let's move on to some of the sound qualities with this. Um, most of my testing was done here at the desktop using the RME and also the uh, THX789 um, running FUBAR on my computer and uh, um, also tested with a uh, Filem M11 Pro. And I actually, I mean, this had enough power, more than enough power, but I, I attached it to, I attached this to my portable um, 789 amp from uh, um, Monoprice. And cause that has more power. And I just, I felt like that was a better comparison with the RME. So, and then I also plugged it into my home stereo uh, in the, the, the Marantz that I have. So what I'll say is this, I'll, I'll use some songs to kind of talk about it. The, one of the songs that I use for detail retrieval, you guys watch my videos, you know this, um, it's from the uh, soundtrack of The Truth About Charlie. And the song is Dicara a la Pared. I think that's how it's pronounced. I think it's French and I'm probably butchering it, but that's how I pronounce it. Um, that song in the beginning has us has rain dropping outside on the ground. It's you know light rain. Um, the there's a metal roof above that, and you can hear the rain hitting that. Maybe metal or one of those plastic roofs, um, and then you can hear footsteps in that rain. So some headphones, some IEMs, you can hear it. Some you can't. Um, you can hear it, but it sounds just very uh, undetailed, like it's just it's hard to determine what it is you're listening to. With these, I could hear it very, very detailed, just like I could with say, um, the uh, Tans Gym Oxygens, which I keep in my little case here, um, or with the uh, uh, Fearless Tequila. I mean, those are the two I'll talk about. I mean, there's dozens of others, right? But uh, I'll kind of use those two as references as far as detail and technicality goes. Separation was very good. Um, guitar instruments were very good. Vocals were good. They were okay. They weren't the best, but they were okay. Um, so let me go back up to that, that Dakara song. So right after the rain and the, the music starts up, uh, there's like a violin that starts playing and then it moves into a woman singing and, um, and some headphones or IEMs, uh, I enjoy listening to that song and some I don't. It just, there's no reason to, it doesn't move me to. Um, I did enjoy listening to it on this, to a point. Um, another song that I, I checked this on was, uh, um, well, actually a bunch of songs, but I, I used uh, Robin Trower. I used some heavy metal stuff. Uh, of course, Amanda Martinez. I like her recording, so I used that. I listened to um, a really great recording of, Fleetwood Mac, uh, Go Your Own Way. Um, here's what I'd say. Treble on these and upper range detail is, is excellent. I'm going to say it's as good as many IEMs I listen to, which is what really surprised me because typically headphones just don't compete in that area, not, not where IEMs. Because, I mean, let's face it, an IEM is stuck down in your ear and they've got, and they usually break it up with multiple BAs to deal with multiple high end frequencies, right? Um, so, and sometimes they even have an electrostatic in them. So you can't get that kind of detail retrieval from a headphone typically, because it just, it's just not designed to do that. It, I mean, in, in its design, just, you know, as it is, it's not able to do that. So it, when I hear that, it's, it's something that impresses me, right? Um, now that's kind of where this shined. Now where, it, where it, lacked was bass. Um, and I, I find that with a lot of planars, they just, they just don't have bass. And, you know, I haven't heard every planar there is. And so I, I'm not going to tell you that all planars can't produce bass. Cause I, you know, like I said, I haven't heard all of them, but the planars that I have heard, the bass is okay, but it's never like great. It's never thumping. It's never really moving me. And, and that's not like I'm a bass head. I enjoy bass. I enjoy bass. That's placed properly. And by that, I mean this. So 
in a home stereo system, and you can do this yourself if you if you've got a subwoofer at home, you can set your subwoofer so it actually is coming in higher up in the frequency range than it typically would, right? Then play a song where there's a man singing or a woman with say a deeper voice um, or a cello being played or a bass, a stand-up a bass instrument, um, drums even, but mostly in the, I wanna say in the mid to sub bass range, which would be those, like if someone's playing a cello, cello has obviously high notes, but many of the, the notes on the cello go into the deep sub bass range. And, and you need to have that sub bass range in order for it to really sound realistic. Um, it feels like things are lacking or a little bit thin if they're not there. And that goes with vocals as well. So you can, on your home stereo, you can set your subwoofer to come in at a higher range, typically a little bit higher frequency wise than it normally would. Um, and then turn your subwoofer on and just put someone singing like a male vocal or even a female vocal and turn the subwoofer on and off after a few minutes of listening. And you're gonna hear a change in the tonality of the music because there is sub bass notes in, or, or frequencies in all of those notes. And they kind of round off in the bottom and it, it gives it a fuller effect, a more realistic effect. Um, it kind of transmits, let's say the emotion of that singer or the artist that's playing the, the instrument a little more, right? And so that's where these are lacking, I feel like. They don't have that bass production. They, you know, the, a dynamic driver can move air and you need to move air to produce bass, right? Planars can move air, they just can't do it in the same way a dynamic driver can. So, but what they can do is highs and mids usually extremely well. And I feel like that, this does that. Um, and, and I'm not knocking this, you know, there was, there was a song, uh, I did a, I listened to a Brett Eldridge, if you know who he is. Um, I listened to a song with him and Megan Trainer, and they're singing, I think it's a, maybe it's cold outside, right? A typical Christmas song, but they sing it. It's beautiful the way they sing it. And it's recorded very well. Um, and in that song, surprisingly the bass was super good on these and i and i can't tell you why i listened to them on on another set of like the dt 1990s and it, it was these were better these were better for sure um so the bass on that particular song was good and i, and I don't know why that is um other songs though it was definitely lacking heavy metal all that it, i would say this if you're a person that likes classical music like string instruments um certain types of female vocals these, these are for you. These are, I, I would recommend these. These are a, a very well-made, um, designed, whatever, uh, headset, very comfortable. And the sound is really, really fantastic on these. I, I really enjoyed listening to them. Um, like I said, the only thing they were lacking for me was bass. And so now, and, and I had something to compare side by side, right? I had the DT 1990s and I had the focal clears. So, you know, of course, the focal clears are 1500 bucks. The DT 1990s are about 600 as tested. Um, and these were 349. And these competed at all levels. These had more detail than the focal and they had more detail than the DT 1990. It's very close to the DT 1990, truthfully. The DT 1990 has more detail than the focal does as well. But this and the DT 1990 in the focal, in the, uh, sorry, in the um, upper frequencies, the detail retrieval, that kind of thing, these were slightly better. So, I, I mean, these are a really good buy at the price for what they give you. Now, if you don't have other stuff to listen to and you just go out and buy these, you're probably gonna be perfectly happy because you don't have, you know, you don't have something that produces fantastic bass that you can slip on your head and change with this in the middle of a song and hear the difference, right? And it's when you do that, that the difference becomes apparent. But if you don't have that and, you know, you're used to something with a little less bass, you're probably going to love these. I mean, I really like these. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to keep them or not, but uh, I still want to do some more comparison with other things. But the detail on these is fantastic. Um, stage. So stage on these is pretty good. Um, pretty good. <clears throat> there, there are those out there who say, I, I said in the video a while back, um, I said IEMs that I had some IEMs I was testing and I said they have way better stage then or they, I, I like them way better than headphones and i had a, of course a bunch of people commenting saying yeah but headphones produce way better stage and presence and there's no way it can compete and that kind of thing i'm here to tell you i side by side tested these 
with the Tans Gym Oxygen, the stage and the oxygen is better than these. It sounded wider and further away than these. Um, and I know people say it's because, well, the speaker's away from your ear and that's why it sounds more, the best stage is better. I'm gonna tell you that stage and, and imaging are an acoustical trick on your brain. That's what I, that's what I believe they are. Um, Cause I have IEMs that can do exactly that and do it far better than any headphone I've listened to yet. All right. The, the stage, I, I don't even know how to explain to you. I'll tell you what, the best imaging headphone I've ever heard is this right here, the Sony wireless. I mean, these aren't like audiophile headphones. I love these. I've been using these things every day for like three years now. Um, well, off almost every day. I use them a lot. I listen, I listen to TV with these. I listen to news in the morning on my computer with these. I do meetings with these. Um, the, and I can tell you when I'm listening to a song with these or some type of recording, whether it's television or something, I have to spin my head around and look what's behind me because I constantly feel like there's something 10 or 12 feet behind me making a ticking sound or move some kind of jangle or I hear a door open. The imaging on these is beyond almost any headset I've listened to. So, and these aren't anything fancy. There's just a driver in here. So how is that done? Because they've got DSP or not just DSP, that's probably not the right term or the technology, but they have, you know, circuit boards in this thing and they're controlling how the sound is, is being delivered. So it's an acoustical trick is what it's doing. It's tricking your brain into thinking that there's a large stage or sound and, and things coming from different directions. A lot of headphones can't do that because all it is, if you open it up, like exactly with this is a planar. And from here, it's, this plugs into the, the little plug jack right here, the little jack. The jack has two wires that go to the planar and that's it. There's no circuitry in here. There's no chip in here. There's nothing to tune inside of this. It's just that. I mean, you could add, uh, the only tuning you could do would be to cover or uncover this. I did that. I put my hands over these while I had them on. And of course, since they're open back, it changed the tonality of the headphone. Um, other than that, there's no adjustment on, on how these are gonna sound. They just have to design it and then kind of move it around a little bit inside and hope for the best. There's not really a way to program them. So um, yeah, I, IEMs that I tested had better stage than this. Um, I would say this, side by side, I, I was plugging in the Tans Gym Oxygen and I was plugging in the Sundara back and forth. Um, and, and I can tell you that these sounded better. The Tans Gym sounded better. They had the same amount of detail but they had bass, a lot of bass, and they had a warmth and a more realistic timbre than these had. These are excellent. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sack these at all. If you're someone who likes headphones, these are a fantastic headphone. But I mean, these are 269 and these are 349. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. So yeah, these are really good and I really like them. If you're an IEM guy, you know, maybe spend the money on the Tans Gems. But if you like headphones, you know, these, they don't have bass, okay? They don't have bass, not, not, not solid bass that I would look, be looking for in a headphone. But the detail and the imaging was very good. St the stage was very good. Um, mids were very good. And overall, I was, I was very happy with these. I wouldn't, I didn't feel at all like, there, there was no buyer's remorse, put it that way. If I purchase these, which I did purchase these with my own money, and I'll, if I decide to keep them, I will. Otherwise, I'll put them out on eBay or something or some other site. But uh, you know, I didn't feel buyer's remorse at all. I I felt like I I got my money's worth. These are a really excellent headphone. Um, so that's the review for the Sundaras. I hope it helps you in a decision in the future if you're looking for headphones. Um, have a great holiday if you don't see my videos before or after Christmas. Bye.